Hello and welcome to vlog number 156. This week I'm going to talk about bradykinesia or slowness of movement in Parkinson's disease. Bradykinesia is one of the three cardinal signs of Parkinson's, the other two being muscular rigidity, which was the topic of vlog number 155, and tremor. According to the Parkinson's Foundation website, www.parkinson.org, you must have bradykinesia and either tremor or rigidity for a diagnosis of Parkinson's to be considered, which might explain why it was dismissed by the neurologist that examined me in the mid-1990s. My symptoms back then were a mild tremor, anxiety and loss of sense of smell. Bradykinesia is a term that describes the slowness of carrying out a movement, but it encompasses a couple of other terms that are also used to describe slowness of movement. Akinesia, which describes a lack of spontaneous movement, such as in facial expression. A reduction of associated movement, such as reduced arm swing when walking. The time taken to initiate movement and freezing of gait. And hyperkinesia, which describes the fact that, as well as the movement being slow, the movement is much smaller than intended. An example of this is micrographia, which is a term used to describe the shrinking size of a PD patient's handwriting. Although all of these terms are used to describe slowness of movement, they refer to differing aspects of that slowness. Bradykinesia is one of the early signs of a movement disorder such as Parkinson's and is caused by a reduction in dopamine levels in the brain. It causes difficulties with rapidly repeated movements such as cutting up your food or brushing your teeth, which is why your neurologist asks you to make rapid finger taps or to tap your foot up and down while he examines you. It can be a particularly frustrating symptom in that it is often unpredictable. One minute you can be moving normally, the next you're in need of help. I recall an incident shortly before I was diagnosed with PD. I was sweeping the floor in the kitchen of the cottage that I was renovating. My eldest stepson, who had been plastering a ceiling for me, watched me with incredulity before grabbing the broom from my grasp, saying, Here, let me do that. We'll be here all day at that rate. I didn't know what he was going on about. I was completely unaware of the speed at which I was sweeping. These days I'm much more self-aware and I know that my movements are much slower than they used to be. There are a number of factors that may contribute to bradykinesia and these are muscular stiffness and rigidity, tremor, variability of movement and slowness of thought. Medication can help with bradykinesia, with levodopa most commonly being prescribed, but dopamine agonists, MAOB inhibitors and amantadine can also be used, either alone or in conjunction with other medications, to improve slowness of movement, as well as helping tremor and muscular stiffness. Deep brain stimulation can also help, and I remember my wife's amazement at the speed of my movement immediately following my operation. I'm getting much stiffer and slower these days, so it'll be interesting to see if the DBS nurses can improve this by programming my neurostimulator when I have my next visit to the hospital in May this year. I certainly don't want to start taking PD meds unless it's absolutely necessary, because I gain very little benefit from them, and they make me feel extremely unwell. Other non-pharmaceutical approaches are available. Physiotherapists can recommend exercises to maintain or improve muscle tone and give advice on improving the quality of movement during everyday activities. Occupational therapists can suggest devices or aids to assist you and may suggest changes to your routine to enable you to remain mobile and independent. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or have a topic that you would like me to cover in future vlogs, just leave me a message in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Have a great week. See you next Friday.